Hey guys, you're back with Steph and Dennis and we know we've seen this video title before where someone breaks down how much YouTube paid them for the past year. And yes, we are gonna share with you exactly how much we got paid because we think income transparency is super important, but we also wanted to put a little twist on this video and break down how personal finance YouTubers, specifically the big ones that get paid a lot, are getting richer and richer with these earnings. So if you came to hear our income total, don't worry, you're gonna get it, but we're also gonna do a fun deep dive into the world of money YouTubers and their money. A quick recap on us to kick us off here. We got on YouTube in about mid 2019, started posting about money and career topics specifically in January, 2020, got monetized in about mid 2020, July, 2020. And then 2021 was our first full year making money off of YouTube. But enough about us for just one second. We're gonna start by talking about how people make money off of YouTube in general and then get back to us. Okay, so let's talk about making money on this platform in particular. So a couple months ago, we put out a video on our multiple income streams. And basically in that video, we dived a lot more deep into the different streams of income that we have. But if we're talking YouTube in particular, according to the YouTube guidelines, you need to have at least a big enough following in order to get paid. Meaning you need to have at least a thousand subscribers. You need at least 4,000 watch hours. And then once you have that, then you can have ads run on your videos for which you can get compensated for. Now, if we're looking at who makes the money across YouTube based on the different video topics that people come up with, it's no secret that the finance creators get paid some of the highest RPMs simply based on the fact that you have a different caliber of advertisers that want to advertise on those specific videos. Really, when it comes down to it, if we're looking at banks, different investment platforms, financial institutions in general, they are some of the wealthiest organizations, both historically and to date, right? So if we're talking money, if we're talking big budgets when it comes to advertising, especially in the new age where you have so much competition in the space, that's gonna translate into a higher RPM for a lot of the finance YouTube creators. Now, when it comes to how much, especially when we're looking at these really big finance creators, we're gonna get to that in a second in this video, but that's pretty much how we specifically make our money on YouTube. Okay, so now it is time for the good stuff where we actually share with you how much we made specifically on AdSense alone for our YouTube channel for 2021. So let's kick it off in January. Like we said, um, and throughout all of 2020, the year of 2020, so last year, we didn't crack a thousand per month. We didn't hit more than I think 800 and something in a single month in AdSense. So starting off the year in January, it was great where we hit the 2,900 mark. That was amazing, huge start to almost have $3,000 in one month. So at the time it was a mix of a few things we had. Um, we posted the most videos per month that we did all year. We posted nine or 10 videos. The rest of the months of 2021, we posted six or seven. So that had an impact. If you look at the RPM, it was $8.78. Definitely on the lower side too. So if it was a higher RPM month, we would have made even more money, but still more than I think our average of the year. There were some months that were a lot lower than that. And um, what else happened? We had a few videos that had over 100,000 views as well. So not only did we post more videos, but we also got more views on those videos. So a higher overall re revenue total for the month. So that was what happened in January, which was an extremely exciting way to start off the year. If we hop over to February, Let's see what happened in the shortest month. So the revenue was still pretty high at $2,345. Same thing where we posted a few more videos. I think there was about eight videos that month. Um, we had another one on specifically our apartment hunting videos. Those are some of our most views to date. So that helped it. And also some of the videos from January kept getting a lot of views throughout February. You can see the RPM was up a little bit at $9.88, which helped that total as well. So now if we look at 2021 as a whole to kind of show you how the months played out after that, you can obviously see that January and February were a bit higher and then it kind of went a little lower. There are some bumps up in here and there as we had specifically big videos, like our apartment tour was a big one. We had one in April that got pretty big. Um, looks like there was one in July there as well, but throughout the months it was pretty steady. We were making about a thousand to two thousand per month, just under that two thousand mark. You can kind of see it down here: seventeen hundred in July, one thousand one hundred seventy-five in August, sixteen hundred in September, and then October. You can really see that's where we had another spike up again. So let's take a look at October to see what happened there. So this was actually our highest earning month of the year after January, which is number two. So we made $3,215.80 and eight cents. It was up 94% from the month before. So a huge revenue growth from us at, for this month. Now it was a few things. We posted our I Quit My Job videos, both of them, plus Great Resignation, some big videos like that. So again, another month with really high views over several videos. And at the same time, the RPM was huge this month. This is what had the biggest impact on it being the highest revenue month, even though it wasn't the highest views month. And we didn't post 
Again, we only still posted six or seven videos, so it was mostly this RPM that drove the overall revenue. So you can see the RPM was $14.28. That is definitely our highest month of the year, considering that the average throughout the year, I think we'll show you that in a second, was only $7.86. So $14, double our average revenue for the year, that was huge. And now you can actually see the final total that we got for the year. This is as mid-December. Um, of $22,816.05. So we'll probably in the next two weeks crack that 23,000 mark. So 23,000 ish is how much we made on AdSense this year, 2021 for a channel with 50,000 subscribers and a few videos over 100,000 views. So the last thing I wanna point out is also our top earning videos. I think this is interesting because if you look at them, they're actually all from the very beginning of 2021. So our two apartment hunting videos and the how I'll save 60% of my income. Those are all videos that had over 100,000 views and were early, early in the year, January and February. But at the same time, we also have this TFSA video that was our fifth highest earner of 2021. And that video was actually posted Posted in July of 2020 and at the time it didn't have as many views or as high of earnings by far I think we only had like a hundred dollars off of it all of 2020 so it kind of shows that even though a lot of our videos from later in the year this year weren't our top earners they could still be next year so it's nice to have that content that will always grow um, regardless of the time over time it can continue to build more views and then also make more revenue for us so that's it for how much our channel made on AdSense this year we'd love to know in the comments if you thought it was gonna be higher or lower than this and let's get back to the rest of the video Okay, so the last couple of years have been super interesting. So that's 2020 and 2021, right? And when me and Steph were talking about doing this video, something that came up was the fact that the finance YouTubers, particularly the big ones, they've gotten really, really rich super quickly. Now, when I say personal finance or finance YouTuber, I'm talking about the heavy hitters or the leaders in this space. And we all know who they are, right? This is the Graham Steffens, Meet Kevins, Andre Jeeks, Financial Education with Jeremy, basically the Millennial Money YouTube channel. And I say all this to make sure that we're all on the same page. So let's start at the beginning of 2020 before we even head to the pandemic, right? The financial space looks really interesting because you have a bunch of up and coming companies that are really disrupting the investing space in particular. So I'm talking the Wealth Simples for those of you that are in Canada, and I'm talking the Robin Hoods for those of you that are in the States. These two companies alone, love them or hate them, they were absolutely disrupting the market. Previously, people didn't even feel comfortable talking about investing. Now, all of a sudden, they have access to low cost investing at the palm of their hands. So now if you're following what I'm saying, basically what happened is we kicked off the year with a climate where a lot of people were already looking to learn more about investing and were signing up for these low cost, low fee investment platforms. And then once March of 2020 hit and we had our different closures, we had our little mini recession there and people were at home, all of a sudden, YouTube had, had this influx of just this really big audience of people who were looking to learn more about personal finance and investing. So the big YouTubers, the big personal finance YouTubers who already had an audience, they were able to capitalize on this newfound, just like influx of people. So now this is where we saw a shift in the quantity of videos being made and also the RPMs in relation to those videos. RPM rates were super, super high for personal finance videos, especially during the summer of 2020. We literally saw creators like Meet Kevin go from putting out one video every single day to all of a sudden doing five, six, seven, eight videos a day. So if we take a look at other creators like Graham and Andre, for example, even though they didn't necessarily increase their output of videos, they still capitalize on the fact that so much was happening in the financial markets. If we take a look back at what was happening during that time, we had the whole GameStop versus AMC thing that was going on. We had a stimulus check update basically every other week. And we also had Wall Street bets being mentioned on pretty much every news coverage that was going on, which is crazy. Speaking of stimulus checks, if you guys remember that first point that I made where I told you that everything was somehow related to one another, what was happening is people were getting their checks, and then that money was somehow ending back into the financial markets because guess what? People had Wealth Simple, people had Robinhood, and now had access to the investment markets like they never had before. So now what we have are people with the money and investment platforms. We have YouTubers creating content on how to invest and basically explaining everything that's happening around you. And then we have, once again, YouTubers making all this money and capitalizing on the fact that they have this newfound audience and the fact that rates for these videos were also really high. To give you guys an idea of just how much money these guys were making, Graham put out a video where he mentioned that Meet Kevin was making anywhere from I believe 200K to $400,000 a month. And I believe Graham himself was also making just 
$200,000 a month. And I said, just on purpose. Now, what I think is interesting is the fact that these specific creators who are at the top, they're more so on the entertainment side than they are professional investors, right? And the reason I'm even bringing this up is because we also saw a shift in the risk profile of all these individual creators. So if we take Graham, for example, he has historically, in my opinion, been a very risk averse individual. The majority of his money has always been put to those you know, broad market funds. He rarely ever talked about his direct investments unless they were real estate. And I'm not saying this is bad. I'm more so just pointing out the facts and what I saw. Basically, these creators were making so much money that coupled with the fact that the markets were just crazy and people were seeing some ridiculous gains had all these people investing in all these risky companies because they were hot, they were talked about. And we even saw that from one of Graham's videos when he posted a video on his winners and losers. If we take a look at Andre, he had built his YouTube channel on dividend investing and collecting as much passive income as he could. I would argue that he was even more risk averse than Graham. But once we hit 2020, we saw this shift where Andre was talking more about anything crypto related. So Bitcoin, Ethereum, NFTs. I mean, this is also around the same time where he invited the Dogecoin millionaire guy to come talk about Dogecoin. And clearly this is what people wanted to hear and so I guess the only remaining question is how are they going to get richer? We already talked about how they were making their money. We also talked about them increasing their risk profile and making some riskier investments. But at the end of the day, they're personal finance YouTubers. So when it comes to the basics, they know to put the bulk of their money in these broad market funds, which is exactly what we saw them do. Something else to keep in mind is that they have so much more money now that they can spend 30 to 50 grand on NFTs with the hopes that the value is gonna go up. In general and in the most simplest terms, we've seen so much happen during the pandemic and in the last couple of years that when it comes to these YouTubers making money, realistically, all they have to do is take that money, put it back into the market, and it'll birth more money. That's just, that's just how it works. We hope you all found that as interesting as we did because we've definitely been keeping an eye on these YouTubers of the last year to see how things have been changing. Now, in general, of course, it's ideal to be maximizing your income as much as you can, throwing as much of that money as you can into investments so that you can grow your net worth and your wealth that way, which is exactly what these YouTubers have been doing. Now, they were also in a situation that was unique with the pandemic and the wave of people working from home, like Dennis was talking about, that they had this higher income coming in, then they definitely capitalized on that. And then on the flip side, these markets that they could put their money into were giving them this huge return in a short period of time. Now, this was obviously a beautiful win-win and super amazing for them. Now, all of this was a case of perfect timing and it's not really over yet because a lot of people are still making a lot of money off of YouTube and the markets are still super high, but obviously this can't be the case forever. At some point, we don't know when, but eventually a crash is gonna come. And then there's potential that this pattern could repeat itself after that, but we'll have to wait and see. Overall, we of course think it's a great idea to learn from personal finance creators, money creators on YouTube, podcasts, all of that, especially when it's free resources. It's a great place to go for information, but at the same time, it's really useful to know how these creators make their money and just how much money they're really making too. And it's really interesting stuff. So let us know if you guys like this topic and if you want to hear more about different topics like this and how people are making their money. And if you do, let us know in the comments. All right, guys, so that's a wrap on this video. We hope that you enjoyed it. We do have one more video left for the year, so make sure you stay tuned for that one. It's coming up soon. As usual, you guys know we wanna hear some of your thoughts and comments down below, especially on some of our favorite finance YouTubers. Like, let us know what your thoughts are on them getting rich or, you know, basically everything that's been going on. In the meantime, if you haven't already shown us some love down below with a like, make sure you do so, it really helps out the channel. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe right there in the corner. And if you haven't checked out any of our previous videos, make sure you check them out next door, door. We will be back. You know the vibes, let's go.